Stephen Hester, thanks for joining us. Now, RSA made good progress in the first half of 2018, albeit with some challenges. What stood out for you? We're pleased with the first half progress for RSA. Of course, at the headline level, earnings per share up 18%, dividend up 10%, return on tangible equity 16%. These are very good and strong numbers, which we're pleased to be able to deliver again. Uh, and uh, perhaps particularly so because beneath the covers, uh, we struggled uh, with a number of things, most importantly the weather in the first half, uh, which uh, right across our territories, but especially in Canada, uh, was unusually bad. Uh, and so we've had to uh, absorb uh, those weather losses, of course, support our customers in doing it. Um, and that's hit our underwriting profit, but nevertheless, we were able to deliver increases altogether. You mentioned the weather had a significant impact in Canada in particular and with the beast from the east in the UK. What impact has that had on performance? The, the weather of itself I think is something like £100 million uh, of extra cost compared to the first half of last year. But you know, uh, we shouldn't get too excited about it. Insurers are in the business of protecting our customers against the effects of weather and that means that we'll have some bad years and some good years and we have to build an organization that can cope with that, that can be resilient, that can serve our customers well. And I think we've done that. So it clearly hit us in the first half, uh, but I don't think anything you know, dramatic uh, in that sense. It's just part of our industry. You've given us a broad overview. Let's talk about things region to region. On a regional basis, uh, I think the picture is, of course, different, as it always is in every half year. So uh, in Canada, if we start over there, the business is in great shape, with one important exception, which is the weather, uh, but we've uh, increased uh, the amount of business we do with customers. We've announced a really excellent new partnership with Scotiabank, one of the largest Canadian banks, to be their insurance provider, uh, and, and so that's great. Uh, the costs are in good shape. Our underlying loss ratios are in good shape. Our large losses have come down in Canada, but we had a really bad uh, first half for weather and so that meant that the Canadian result was disappointing but underlying uh, I think I'm really happy with the way our Canadian business uh, is progressing. Uh, when we shift across the Atlantic uh, I'll move to uh, our, our largest business at least by profitability in Scandinavia which is really important for the company and again the headline in Scandinavia is down from the first half of last year uh, but I think that the underlying is in great shape. Uh, our really 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 strong personalized businesses are showing the best growth they have for quite a lot of years. Uh, our costs are coming down, our uh, loss ratios are in good shape. We had some bad luck with large losses and we had um, normal prior year development rather than extra good uh, as we had last year. But I think that Scandinavia fundamentally is a great business for us. We're doing the things uh, that will make it stronger and, and I don't have too many concerns about that. And then finally, our UK and international business, which last year was the, uh, the source of difficulties for us. I'm pleased to say that at least at a headline level, the UK and international profits, underwriting profits, are more than doubled uh, versus the first half of last year uh, with a combined ratio of just over 95%. Uh, and so that's, of course, very heartening. Um, beneath that, uh, the standouts actually were our businesses in, in Ireland and the Middle East, outstanding, excellent results. Uh, in the UK, uh, stronger than the first half of last year, but still not where we want them to be. And, and again, there were some weather effects. You mentioned uh, beasts from the east. Uh, and we're finding it, you know, frankly tough. Uh, the market is soft. It's hard to put through price increases. We're determined to improve our profitability. Uh, and so we are putting through price increases, and that means some uh, volume impacts uh, that we have to deal with. So we're making progress, but it's undoubtedly uh, an area where we have uh, more that we need to do. You mentioned yourself that the UK faced some difficulties in 2017. In terms of the pace of the recovery, how comfortable are you with that? I'm absolutely convinced that we are doing the right things to make our already strong UK business much stronger. Uh, and, and so basically the agenda is to keep doing what we're doing and to see it through. Some of the things we're doing are fundamental retooling of our capabilities in technology, in digital, in data, is a multi-year endeavor. Uh, we saw some really important first deliveries 
uh, in the first half of this year, for example, our new nationwide home partnership on a completely new platform going very well. Um, we've now extended that right at the end of the first half into our motor and that will roll out over the next year and a half. We've just given the go-ahead uh, for uh, a big new claims platform development. So there's some really long-term investments being made in allowing us to compete at the forefront of our industry. And at the same time, we're correcting areas where we didn't do as well as we would have liked last year, such as in our underwriting of large losses, and they've come down in a pleasing way in the first half. So the UK is a difficult market. It's difficult for us, it's difficult for many other people, uh, and we would like to make faster progress, but I'm convinced we're doing the right things and we are making progress. Net written premiums are flat. What's that down to, and what are you doing to return to growth? Right across our business, we've been very clear about our philosophy, and that is to say that we have two groups of people we want to serve well. We need to serve our customers well, uh, and we need to serve our shareholders well. And so in those areas where both things align, in other words, where we're making the right profits for our shareholders uh, and providing the right customer service, we're expanding. Uh, and uh, I mentioned Scandinavian personal lines as a good example of that. Canada is another good example of that. In the areas where one or the other isn't working as well as we'd like, where we need to retool our business to improve customer service, or where we need to improve profitability, there we, we often have a pause in terms of top line. We maybe have to increase prices, which loses us some customers, or we um, have some service interruptions as we bring in new technology. Uh, and so uh, overall, there are areas we needed to improve our service and our profitability and that hit the top line in, in some areas, especially the UK, uh, and we also took out some extra reinsurance. And so that's really the premium story where the business is in great shape from customers and profits, we're expanding, uh, where we have more work to do on one or the other of those functions, uh, we're making sure we do that work properly. You always tell me that underwriting is a critical focus for RSA. What progress has been made and where might there be room for improvement? For insurance companies, underwriting is really what um, for a motor car manufacturer making a good car is. In other words, it's what we do and we have to be good at it. And the world around us is giving us new tools every day to have insights uh, through data, through sophistication of analysis of data, insights on what the risks are out there, how to cope with them, how to price them, how to underwrite them. And so there'll never ever be a year when we aren't trying to be better underwriters and using the tools of the modern world around us to become more sophisticated at the same time as keeping good old fashioned discipline. So uh, we had some things to correct from last year, particularly in the area of large losses. We're making good progress, uh, reporting good progress in the first half. And then we have some underlying things where every year we're getting better, we're using more data, uh, we're improving our risk modeling, uh, we're improving our technical talent, uh, and that's just a constant theme. You talk about the tools and innovations that RSA are using, but something you can't control is the weather. What impact will changing weather patterns have on RSA in the long term, and how prepared are you and your customers? You know, of course, uh, there's a lot of debate about weather and there's a lot of debate about climate change and I, and I guess the majority view is, is that we do have climate change happening and that will deliver more volatile weather patterns. And in, in many respects, of course, that means insurance companies become even more important in people's lives because what we do is help protect against one of the most fundamental risks that mankind faces, which is the risk to their property uh, that comes from weather. And of course, in, in the worst cases, that can be more than just property. Uh, and so uh, these trends are ones where we can help serve our customers and where our customers need, if anything, is increasing. Uh, it, it keeps us in business, if you like. Now, the flip side of that is there are losses to absorb. We need to make sure that we're clever uh, and sophisticated in understanding how those losses might arise in trying to protect ourselves against them, in trying to price properly so we can still make profit whilst protecting our customers and trying to make sure that our claims operations can handle surges of demand. So all of those things are doing. Weather is volatile. It's very hard to predict one moment to another and we'll have some great years for weather and some terrible years for weather and of course that's the inverse of what our customers experience. Uh, but that's our job. Uh, and I think uh, in many respects, uh, I'm pleased that the weather is challenging because it keeps us in business. I have to ask you about Brexit. How is continuing uncertainty around Brexit affecting RSA and your customers? Brexit 
uh, as a direct matter for RSA and indeed I think for the insurance industry generally as a non-event. Um, uh, and so the extent to which we care about Brexit is the indirect effects, the indirect effects on our customers, on the economy, uh, particularly in the UK, uh, which is important for us, uh, on things like exchange rates. So if those indirect effects should be negative or even positive, I think more likely to be negative, then that can have an impact. But I think it's pretty small uh, and limited. There are other industries that will be much more affected. Stephen Hester, thank you very much. Thank you very much.